With the experience and resources for cases throughout Louisiana, Walters Papillon Thomas Collins LLC is proud to support LPB, specializing in personal injury and wrongful death, with information at lawbr.net. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for being here, and thank all of you for tuning in on this Good Friday. Uh, I'm joined today by LSU Gymnastics Head Coach D.D. Bro, who's going to speak uh, towards the end of this about the Get It To Go campaign. Uh, we will also be joined shortly by Archbishop Gregory Amon. Uh, he will uh, be participating by Zoom today. We do start today on a very somber note, and that is that uh, late yesterday afternoon, we lost a member of the Louisiana legislature to COVID-19. Uh, newly elected Representative Reggie Bagala, uh, from Lafouche Parish, uh, spent his life making his community in South Louisiana a better place. Uh, just about three months ago, he was sworn in uh, to his first term, and I know that he came to the state capitol with excitement and eagerness to serve our state and the people of House District 54. Today, the entire state uh, is mourning uh, this great loss, and I ask everyone to please keep his family uh, in, in your prayers uh, right now uh, and well as all the families who have suffered uh, because they've lost someone or because someone remains gravely ill because of this disease and before I get to the latest uh, numbers and, and testing uh, about COVID-19 I want to take a moment to brief you on another situation that people need to be aware of this weekend Saturday and Sunday we're looking at a chance for strong to severe thunderstorms throughout many parts of the state uh, beginning in northwest Louisiana from late Saturday through the first half of Sunday, there will also be isolated flood threat. Uh, wet, widespread flash flooding is not expected at this time, but please pay attention to all of the updates on the weather forecasting because that could change. Transitioning into Sunday, very large hail, widespread destructive wind gusts, and strong long track tornadoes will be possible across much of northern Louisiana. Uh, for South Louisiana, the entire area has been upgraded from slight uh, to either an enhanced or a moderate threat as confidence continues to increase that a significant severe weather outbreak is possible across a large portion of the area on Sunday. At this time, the main threats for most of South Louisiana will be wind gusts up to 60 miles per hour, potentially greater, uh, which could down trees and power lines, hail up to one inch in diameter, and tornadoes, some of which could be very strong with a long track. Uh, timing could change, uh, but at this time, Sunday afternoon and Sunday evening look to be the most dangerous times uh, for this region, and that could potentially extend to overnight on Sunday. We all know that weather forecasts change and conditions change, so get a game plan now to deal with this weather threat. Uh, so stay weather aware, watch for alerts from the National Weather Service, from your local media, and your local emergency managers, and look for emergency alerts on your cell phone, especially uh, as they pertain to uh, tornadoes. And now with that, I'm going to get back to our daily coronavirus uh, briefing. Today we added 970 new cases, uh, bringing our total statewide to 19,253. Uh, sadly, uh, on this Good Friday, we're announcing 53 new deaths, which brings us to 755 total across the state. Overall, our testing uh, capacity has, has yielded 92,000 uh, tests, a little bit more than that, almost 92,300 tests, which keeps us among the very top states in the nation uh, for per capita testing. Now, we're going to continue to do everything we can to further increase uh, the testing that takes place in Louisiana. We did see some small increases in the number of people hospitalized and in the number of people on vents uh, compared to yesterday. But based primarily on the current modeling, the number of new hospital admissions and the number, uh, I should say, the ventilator utilization across the state, it is fair to say that we're in a better place today than we were at this time last week. Uh, and that gives us something to be thankful for 
going into Easter weekend. It is because of you. It is because of the people of Louisiana and your compliance with the stay-at-home order. It is because of the hygiene practices that you all have adopted uh, and social distancing that that is the case. And so I have to caution everyone that we're only going to continue on this more positive trajectory if everyone maintains social distancing, the good hygiene practices, and follows the stay-home order. I want you to know that the federal testing sites that we've had in Louisiana for some time now, uh, three of them operating, two, two of them in New Orleans, one in Jefferson, uh, are going to stay open because you may have seen where today was the last scheduled day. We did request uh, and the federal government has authorized us to maintain that testing capacity in Louisiana going forward with federal sponsorship and this is something that the Vice President offered uh, to me uh, on our video telephone conference uh, earlier this week um, and that's going to happen. The testing at the Ilario Center in Jefferson Parish will continue just as it has been conducted in the past. Uh, the two uh, sites that had been consolidated uh, at UNO in New Orleans will be relocating. Uh, I do want to take this moment to thank Admiral, Admiral Brett Girard, uh, who is, by the way, a Louisiana native. Uh, he works at, at Health and Human Services and the Public Health Service, uh, and he is over testing for the entire country. Uh, and so, obviously, uh, he had something to do with, with the continued sponsorship of the federal government of these testing sites. In order to uh, take maximum advantage of them, uh, working with the Office of Public Health and local elected leaders, and knowing the hot spots that's developing between Baton Rouge and New Orleans and the river parishes, we're going to move these testing sites uh, from New Orleans uh, to uh, one is going to be uh, conducting tests starting next week at Gramercy Elementary School, another at Hanville High School. And now that testing will start on Wednesday, April the 15th. Uh, in addition, the Test Action Clinic uh, will test two days a week in Edgard on the west bank of St. John the Baptist Parish uh, starting next week. And we're working with local providers for a mobile testing unit that will further increase testing along the West Bank of the River Parishes, and we will have more information about that on next week. I am um, pleased to tell you that we have distributed 7.5 million items of PPE thus far. Uh, and I want to thank the National Guard because they are doing the heavy lifting there. They're maintaining our warehouse here, so they receive the shipments. Uh, they then get instructions from uh, GOSEP as to where to deliver uh, those items, and they've also been the ones delivering the ventilators and other things as well. But at this point in time, they have delivered 7.5 million items of PPE. Today I'm announcing the creation of the Louisiana COVID-19 Health Eth Equity Task Force. Uh, by health equity, we mean everyone has have the opportunity to attain uh, their highest level of health. Uh, this task force will bring leverage, I'm sorry, it will leverage our research capabilities and intellectual brain power in a collective manner to tackle uh, this issue. And I'm asking our universities and research institutions and medical community to lead this effort. Uh, specifically, Southern University's Nelson Mandela School of Public Policy, also Xavier University's Department of Public Health Sciences, the Health Science Centers at LSU and Tulane, uh, the Louisiana Department of Health Office of Public Health will participate as well, uh, the Louisiana Department of Health Bureau of Minority Health Access, but also the Pennington Biomedical Research Center and the schools of nursing at all of our universities across the state of Louisiana. The immediate assignment for the task force uh, is to make sure communities with health disparities are blanketed with good information on COVID-19 safety uh, and prevention. Provide the medical community with best practices and protocols for treating communities with underlying medical conditions and health disparities and ensure testing availability and ease of access for all communities. Obviously the end goal is health equity. Uh, we want to make sure that we have better health outcomes on the other side of this pandemic as well. So we need to answer the question, what are the social determinants of health disparity? and how do we ensure health equity for all of our citizens? Um, and this task force uh, will be uh, meeting this charge. Dr. Kim Hunter-Reed, the Commissioner of Higher Education, has already sent an inquiry 
uh, to all of our universities to have identified their leading experts and the names have started coming in uh, to my office. This task force will begin its work immediately and the research will result in the creation of a dashboard on health equity. Uh, this is something we can do now um, to minimize the uh, spread of COVID-19 in, in really across the state, but particularly in these communities where members are most vulnerable. Uh, and if, as you know, the last several days we've been talking about the fact that African Americans are uh, comprising about 70% all of all the COVID-19 deaths, whereas they're only 33% of the state's population. Uh, and we're, we've got to try to figure uh, out what we can do to address that. But the work that's going to be done by this task force is actually going to benefit everybody in the state of Louisiana. I do hope that everyone will have a blessed Easter weekend. Uh, remember, you can be with your loved ones. I'm encouraging you to be with your loved ones, but do that one household at a time um, and, and refrain from the large gatherings that you would typically engage in over Easter uh, weekend. I do have, again today, a couple of questions from uh, the public. Uh, the first one is Debbie from Baton Rouge. Uh, I'm going to read the question, and I'm going to ask Dr. B to come up and, and answer it. If you test positive, what is your incubation period till you're considered well? Is it a certain time fever-free? Um, so that's a, a great question, Debbie, and I think probably asking a question that's on a lot of people's minds. And I think it, it bears um, us emphasizing, despite the fact that we've sadly lost 755 Louisianans, most people who get the COVID, uh, who have COVID, will get better. Uh, now, my understanding is that it is a pretty rough illness, and it's not something that any of us want to have to go through. Uh, so by all means, everything the governor just said, uh, we should be staying at home and, and limiting our, our uh, exposure to folks. Um, but um, it, it is something that, that takes time to, to get through. Uh, our definition from the, the CDC definition for when we can say that you're actually recovered is at least seven days after uh, you had symptoms developed. That's usually when we say you had the beginning or your onset of, of illness. Um, and after that time period, what we're looking for is three days without a fever, um, and without any, or without significant improve, and with significant improvement in your symptoms, um, before we can say uh, that you are uh, recovered. And importantly, that time period without the fever has to be without taking a medicine like uh, a Tylenol or ibuprofen uh, that's helping reduce that fever. So again, you'd have to be without symptoms uh, for three days before we would say you're recovered. And during that entire period between symptoms and to that point where you're fever-free and feeling better. Everybody uh, who has those symptoms, even if you haven't been tested, should be isolating, so staying away from your family and friends and doing an extra good job of cleaning up um, after yourself, washing your hands, so that we really limit the spread of, of virus around the communities. Um, so thanks for that question, Debbie. Thank you, Alex. And uh, Francis from Pineville has asked, will some parishes be able to open back up sooner than those with hotspot situations? That too is a great question, and as we get closer to April the 30th, uh, we will make a decision here about what, if any, of the uh, restrictive measures that are currently in place get continued. Uh, and quite frankly, as Dr. Fauci says all the time, the virus is in control of the timeline going forward. Uh, we really are not. But as we get closer to that date, we will look at what the situation is in Louisiana, what the guidance is coming from the CDC, what the testing uh, capacity is at that point uh, for surveillance, for diagnostic, and, and uh, for purposes dealing with the serology testing that we talked about yesterday, trying to figure out who has contracted COVID-19 and, and gotten through it and has the antibodies uh, that, would, uh, that should uh, mean that they don't get it again, uh, although this is a novel coronavirus and we're still learning about it and, and so forth. But all of that's going to be taken into consideration as we decide how to move forward after April the 30th. I am encouraging everyone uh, to be patient uh, and to understand that, that when we get to April the 30th and beyond, uh, what the situation looks like is going to depend upon what we do between now uh, and then. And that's why it's incredibly important uh, that, that we, we continue with our present posture, uh, be focused and be determined. Uh, to, to make sure that we're following the stay-at-home order, 
that we are not engaging in unnecessary travel and contact with other folks, that we're maintaining our social distancing and our good hygiene uh, practices. And if we do that, uh, the one thing I can say for sure is as we get closer to April 13th, we're going to be in a, in a better place than we otherwise uh, would have been. Uh, before I take uh, questions from the press, I'm going to turn it over to one of our special guests, Archbishop uh, Gregory uh, Amon. He's joining us today uh, from New Orleans by Zoom. Uh, it is Good Friday, um, and, and I thought it's an important time for many of us uh, to hear from someone like the Archbishop uh, here at the start of the Easter weekend. You probably know this, but the Archbishop has been diagnosed with uh, COVID-19. Uh, I believe he is recovered now. Uh, I asked him to join us today to speak about his experience with the disease, uh, but also to offer a prayer for uh, the state of Louisiana. And Archbishop, thank you so much for joining us today, and I'll turn the floor over to you. We're going to thank you for the opportunity to participate in this news conference. And I also want to thank you as our governor for your very strong and effective leadership during this very critical time. We appreciate what you are doing for us and the wisdom with which you lead us. As you mentioned, Governor, yes, I had the virus, and uh, I'm pleased to say that I have recovered. I felt the healing hand of God upon me. And those of us who have had the virus, uh, we know how complex it is, uh, how much energy it drains from us. I only had one of the three symptoms of the virus, and so I was well aware as I was recovering and in quarantine that there were many people out there who were far more ill than I was. But that experience for me enabled me to be able to be in unison, in solidarity uh, with those who were sick, especially those who were in hospitals and on respirators. So I, I thank God for the healing that he has given to so many of us as we move forward in this very challenging time. Well, thank you very much uh, for sharing that with us. And and as a request uh, from me, I would ask that you would offer up a prayer on this Good Friday as, as we look forward to Easter Sunday. Thank you. And before I offer the prayer, I would first like to um, address for a moment our Jewish brothers and sisters. Sure. Uh, we are celebrating Holy Days, uh, but so are they. We are celebrating the Passover beginning this week and into next week. And so to all of our Jewish sisters and brothers, uh, may God's peace be with you, and may these days of Passover be a time of blessing for you and for your family. Let us pray and bow our heads in prayer. Lord Jesus, on this day we not only remember, but we celebrate and we thank you for your passion and your death. You bore the cross. And you did so, and we give you thanks because you set us free from sin. You showed us the Father's mercy and reassured us of the Father's love. Thank you for carrying the cross. Thank you for reassuring us that we are indeed loved and forgiven. And Lord Jesus, you have always promised that you would be with us. We ask you in particular during this challenging time of the coronavirus, we ask you to be with us, to lead us, to protect us. It is a challenging time and a cross that we bear, Lord Jesus, and so we ask you to help us to carry that cross. Lord Jesus, on this Good Friday, we ask you to bless the state of Louisiana as we move forward. To those who are ill from the virus, we ask you to heal them. To those who have gone before us in death, give them eternal rest. Give protection to all of us, and we ask you blessings and perseverance on our health care professionals and all those who work with them and our first responders. Help them that they can truly be the healers of our time. And we ask you to bless our governor and all of our, all the people who serve us and lead us. Lord Jesus, your death led to resurrection. We pray that this Calvary, this way of the cross that we are experiencing with the coronavirus will lead us to new hope and to new life. 
We ask you to shine your light as the risen Christ into our darkness and to give us trust and confidence in all that you do for us. We ask this in your name, but you are God, living and reigning forever and ever. Amen. Thank you very much, Archbishop, and it's great to have you with us, and I'm so pleased that you are on the mend and, and, and feeling much better. God bless you. Thank you, Governor. I appreciate it. Okay, and now we're going to ask uh, Coach D.D. Bro uh, from LSU Gymnastics Program, a legendary coach, uh, to come up and, and speak about the Get It To Go campaign that uh, promotes safely supporting our local restaurants. If you would, come on up. Um, thank you. Thank you, Governor. Um, I was honored to be asked to, to do the PSA about Get It To Go. Um, and, you know, it's all about playing defense. And we have to be on the same team. And team is total effort, all members. And when we do this, we represent our communities and our families and our states, our state. And what we want to do is win. We want to beat this thing. And winning, what is winning? It's what's important now. And the message that our governor gives and our archbishop gives, that is what's important now. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coach. I like that. I'm going to have to remember that team and win. And uh, as, I, as I continue to ask the people of Louisiana to be patient and do what's required of us now as it relates to social distancing, hygiene, and stay at home. Uh, so, with that, I will take your questions for a bit. Yes, sir. Governor, on the uh, task force addressing the racial disparities, did you say it's going to be helping with testing, and if so, in what way? And also, do you have a sense for whether there is a racial disparity in the amount of testing in Louisiana and also in the amount of cases? I know we've released information yeah. on death. Well, we, we've told you w once before, uh, at least, that one of the things that we're not able to get a clear resolution on is the... Uh, the race of the individuals who are being tested. Uh, and that is because over 90% of the tests are now coming from private labs and they don't identify that information. It, it, we, are, we are working going forward to try to have that information reported to us along with the results, whether someone is COVID ne negative or COVID positive. And because it, be, it would be interesting to know um, quite frankly, if, if what the percentage of, of COVID positive people are in Louisiana um, by race, because we do know and can more readily obtain the identity, uh, or should say the, the race of the individuals who die. And to be able to compare and contrast those numbers would be very important for us, but we can't presently do it. Um, so I can't tell you whether there's a disparity there or not. Uh, what we can tell you is that, that despite all the efforts we've made, and which, by, which by the way, uh, have been uh, huge efforts and, and, and largely successful, because we either have the, the highest number of tests per capita in the country or we're second, and it's right there with New York, and it kind of goes back and forth every day. We don't have the amount of testing that we would like. Uh, that is particularly true in some of the uh, rural areas, although... Um, it is false, and, and I think some of this has been reported. Mostly it's, it's rumors out there. There is no parish, there is no region of our state that, that isn't currently testing. Um, but, but we don't believe that, that we have adequate testing um, anywhere. And so we're trying to improve that and get more of that into the rural areas. Um, so this task force is going to look at these health disparities. Uh, and, and there's a short-term immediate goal, and, and, and that is to help us through this COVID-19 public health emergency by making sure that we're putting out as much good information. I mean, by good, I mean accurate and timely, telling people what they need to do. Not just the things like stay at home, social distancing, good hygiene, but if you happen to have hypertension, make sure you're doing what you're supposed to be doing from a perspective of your diet, uh, taking your medicine. Uh, same thing with, with diabetes and so forth. Because um, you've already got uh, these these underlying conditions, and so making sure that you're 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 treating as well as you can from a medication perspective, uh, and from other things that that you can control, 
put you in the best possible position to withstand this virus should you contract it, this disease should you contract it. So that they're going to be working on that. And then they're going to look long term, and this, this should benefit us well past the pandemic, as to what we can do as a state to better address these underlying uh, dis uh, chronic health condition disparities that we are seeing um, right now. And, you know, it shouldn't make us feel any better, but it is obviously the case that this exists far beyond Louisiana. If you look at, at the reports that are coming out of other states, uh, they're having similar situations, uh, and, and in fact, almost in direct proportion to ours. Um, but but the fact that it's shared by other states doesn't mean it's not a big issue. It is. We we have to figure out how we can how we can tackle this issue, figure out what the social what social determinants of health are playing into these disparities, and and what can we do to address those. Um, but the fact that uh, potentially African Americans have a greater prevalence of these comorbidities doesn't mean that this study is only going to benefit. Uh, the African Americans, because it's going to benefit everybody who happens to have hypertension or diabetes or kidney disease or heart disease or, or um, have an obesity issue. Um, but we know that the the disparity is playing out uh, with a disproportionate number of deaths being visited upon the African American community, uh, and 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 that's that's the the primary uh, reason that we instituted it as quickly as we did, and want to bring some results to bear early enough to help us with this particular emergency. Yes, sir. Um, on, on that, um, isn't this just kind of like uh, the coronavirus has exposed a long, dark secret, mm -hmm. not just in Louisiana, but in our country, that African Americans have these underlying issues, but it's because of the grocery gap and just different things like that, because African Americans, to a larger extent, do not have access to healthy foods and things like that. Yeah, I, I think that's fair, and I think we know that we can have better behavior uh, in our state. Uh, we still have too many people who smoke. We have too many people who don't exercise. We have too many people who drink three sodas a day rather than water. Um, I mean, it, it is all of it, uh, and, and I, don't, I don't profess to know all the uh, answers to, to the question that you just asked, uh, but, but that's what this task force is going to look for. Um, but maybe this is an opportunity. Uh, given that uh, this virus, this disease, is shining a light on these disparities, maybe this is our opportunity to finally break through to a larger number of people and get them to change their behaviors, get them to take advantage of the opportunities that they have in order to, to see a primary care physician uh, and start managing their diseases better uh, and do this before the disease uh, gets so bad that it's really hard to treat. You know, that's that's what was so important about getting people an opportunity, perhaps through Medicaid expansion, to have primary care, preventative care that they didn't have before, uh, to get diagnosed with illnesses and diseases before they progressed to the point where they were almost impossible to treat, and then you have that, that pharmacy benefit so that, so that you can actually uh, be a, a, afford to fill the prescriptions and take them as prescribed to keep these conditions hopefully in check and, and mean that you're healthier. So maybe, maybe this is a way to finally get people to focus on these things because it's not so abstract anymore. This, there is a real price to pay, um, and, and you pay it every day, but you pay the ultimate price too often uh, in the situation of a pandemic like we're experiencing right now. So maybe this gives us an opportunity to really uh, drive some change uh, in behavior and some, some changes in society, some changes in the way we deliver health care, all of it. Uh, to elevate the health of, of the people of Louisiana. Yes, sir. What's your message to those uh, still fighting coronavirus and those survivors of this virus? Wow. You know, um, I thought about this a lot last night uh, after I, I learned that, that Representative Bagala had, had passed and, and uh, that the disease had taken his life. Um, and then I looked at a, um, a video that... Ted James did, uh, rep another state representative, and a very, very powerful uh, video. And, and then I compared it with some stories that I've been told by some people that I know who haven't gone public, but I know that they've had the, the, the disease and, and they've been in the hospital. It, this is just really tough. And, and for the family members out there, their loved ones are in the hospital room and they can't go visit them. 
Now, uh, they're depending on the condition of their loved one, they may be able to have phone calls or may be able to FaceTime. Or it could be that the individual is, is uh, incapacitated and can't participate in that. Um, and so they're forced to uh, obviously uh, try to support that person from a distance. And, and obviously they can pray with them or for them, I, I should say. But th what a tough situation for those family members. And obviously for the individual with the uh, disease as well. Th I can only imagine uh, what that must be like in my heart. It really does. It breaks for those people. And this is happening, I mean, this is happening all over the world right now, um, all over the country. And, and every day we come out here with new cases and new hospitalizations and new deaths. This, this is just really, really tough. Uh, and, and which I hope that everybody who's listening to this and thinking about this understands that there are some things that they can do to make sure these numbers stay as small as possible. And they're the things we've been talking about for a month now, literally for a month. And they haven't changed. They work. Um, and, and, you know, we love one another. And, and we're, we know how to be good neighbors. Being good neighbors right now means you, you do what we're asking you to do. Uh, maintain your social distancing. Make, make sure that you're practicing good hygiene. Follow the stay-at-home order. Don't go out unnecessarily don't go shopping more often than you need to don't take the whole family with you um all of these things and and, and be patient I mean, look this is this is a tough tough situation and especially we're going into easter weekend which is uh for christians and and certainly i'm one of those this this is the the holiest of times in the whole year i mean it, it is this weekend uh and and so hopefully we can lift up one another in prayer i happen to personally believe that three o'clock on good friday is the is is the the time of not that you shouldn't pray every day uh but that is the time to offer up a prayer because i happen to believe it's 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 received um and and it's just a little stronger than it normally is last question melinda uh governor uh, the the prison of oakdale has obviously had a number mm -hmm. of cases and multiple deaths at this point um, have you been in contact with the Federal Bureau of Prisons and, and what is being done and, and from your perspective, what should be done to handle the outbreak there and, and it, whether that's to release prisoners early yeah. or, or what method would you prefer? So I have not been in contact with the Bureau of, of Prisons. I know that the Attorney General, U.S. Attorney General uh, Barr, has addressed uh, this particular issue and he singled out uh, that prison in Louisiana as one of a handful that caused him to issue some guidance about furloughing prisoners to home under certain circumstances and reducing those populations. What we have been doing is talking to the regional uh, hospitals uh, that have been taking those people into their care. Um, and that is a very uh, serious uh, situation. Uh, I don't have any, any new information on it, uh, but, but obviously um, that that is a, a grave concern uh, of ours, uh, and, and it is our, my hope, obviously, that they can get that under control uh, through the actions that they've taken, uh, both to try to get uh, as many inmates out of that facility as possible, but, but with all the other things that they're going to do to try to isolate and reverse isolate uh, th these, these individuals before uh, they contract the virus. Look, I want to thank y'all for, uh, again, for coming out today for the uh, press conference, and, and I want to thank all the people who've been paying uh, careful attention to this. Please be patient and understand that, that we have to get through this. We're going to do it. Uh, the day is going to come. Uh, I don't know when, and I don't know what's going to transpire between now and then, but the day is going to come when, when this will be behind us. Uh, we're going to get back to, to life as, as we want it to be and, and so forth. And between now and then, let's support one another. Uh, let's do what we can to, to be good neighbors and to take care of one another, but do it from a distance. Uh, and, and lastly, again, this being Easter weekend, I do ask everyone to lift one another up in prayer uh, and that we will especially remember those health care providers those doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists and all of those allied health professionals who are doing so much uh, right now to take care of, of people who, who need it the most uh, and in very, very difficult situations and at some risk of, 
of harm to themselves. Uh, and if you just think about what, generally speaking, a hero is, that's what a hero is. Uh, it's not the athlete, as much as we love athletes. It's not the, the politician. It's not the rich person. It's not the actor or the actress. It, these are heroic actions, and they're taking place in every hospital across Louisiana, in all of these healthcare settings, and all across the, the country. So let's, let's remember them um, this weekend in our prayers, uh, and let's get through this. God bless you, and thank you. With the experience and resources for cases throughout Louisiana, Walters Papillon Thomas Collins LLC is proud to support LPB, specializing in personal injury and wrongful death, with information at lawbr.net.